blessed Saturday afternoon to everyone. We welcome you to our online worship service. To start with our program this afternoon, may we sing, Come Thou Fount, as we acknowledge God's providence of blessings, material and spiritual wise for this week. We will provide lyrics on our projector screen, and so may I encourage everyone to please sing with me. Come Thou Fount.
our loving and most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this blessed day, blessed weekend that you have given us, wherein we can take some time off from our usual schedule, from our usual activities, so that we could spend time reflecting about your goodness and grace, counting our blessings, enumerating the wondrous and mighty things that you have done in us, through us, and for us. We thank you that we can spend time with you this afternoon through this online worship service. We thank you, blessed Father, for the gift of salvation and discernment and knowledge that we continue to enjoy and experience throughout the week. We thank you, Father, for your tender mercies and for your loving kindness to all of us. We thank you for the song that we have just sung. We acknowledge, Lord, that you are the source of everything. You are the fountainhead of all the blessings, of all things, both good and better and best things. You are the source of everything. And we thank you, loving Father, that in your wisdom and sovereignty, you even allow adverse things to come to us, adverse circumstances to be experienced by us. Because even through this, you can turn this into something good, something better for all of us. Thank you, Father, for the verses that we have read reminding us about your permanence. We thank you, Father, because you are eternal. You are what we are not. In the midst of our transitoriness, you are always there and you never change. When our strength would fail, your power remains. When our reputation would crumble, your name lasts for eternity. Blessed are you and forever, for all eternity, you will continue to be blessed, to be honored, to be glorified because you are God. And we just thank you that you have given us this opportunity to worship you this afternoon. We pray that you will bless every part of this service. We may not be among our brethren. We may be worshiping alone by ourselves this afternoon. But we know that the, that the presence of your Holy Spirit is with us to guide us as we worship you so that the way we worship and the quality of our worship would be acceptable in your sight this afternoon. Cleanse us from all our sins and trespasses and transgressions. Father, we ask you to make us worthy in your sight this afternoon. May every thought and word that would be in our minds, that would come out of our lips, become offering of a sweet-smelling quality to you and to your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit. We thank you again, Father, for your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
May, may I introduce to you our theme song for the series, Guard and Guide Your God-Given Heart. It is entitled, Keep Your Heart. Sing hymns and uh, 
a few moments ago, we have uh, just uh, uh, sang our theme song for this uh, for this series that we will be doing. Uh, the title of the song is uh, "Keep Your Heart," and uh, we can also meditate upon God's word. Uh, we just thank the Lord that uh, the freedom is still ours uh, as we continue to please Him and to praise Him and to glorify Him through our lips and life. Uh, uh, I know that this has been a busy week for you, for all of you, and uh, to some of our brethren, they are uh, probably they are uh, somewhere else today. Uh, this today is their rest day and probably some of them are on a hike and uh, we trust that you are doing well we trust that you are just safe and healthy and strong we keep on praying for all of you and uh, we believe that God is our protector and God is the one who keeps us safe he always hedges us in uh, in his uh, uh, powerful protection. He even covers us with His power so that uh, uh, nothing, uh, no harm would come upon us. And so we thank the Lord that uh, up to this moment we are alive, we are healthy, uh, our minds are healthy, our hearts are, are doing well, and uh, we are ready to worship God uh, together this afternoon. Before we uh, come to our study of God's Word, let us just pause for a while and uh, bring some items to the Lord in thanksgiving and uh, even some of our petitions. Let us, let us pray. Father, we thank you that this afternoon you have proven yourself mighty and strong to each one of us. We thank you, Father, for answering our prayers this week we are we are in constant prayer for our safety and for our good health we thank you father for granting it to us we thank you that we can give you our praises for answering our prayers for some of our brethren who recovered from the covid-19 virus Last uh, weekend, we have prayed for Pastor Nathaniel Palma and, uh, and Sister Ayet and their son, Salt. Uh, all of them uh, got sick with the virus, but we thank you, Father, that they were able to recover. Uh, you have empowered them, Lord, to just uh, be able to become healthy again. We thank you, Father, for the answers to our prayers. Thank you also for uh, providing the needs of our loved ones in the Philippines. There are places, Lord, where uh, food are scarce, uh, food uh, supplies are scarce. There are places where uh, even the basic services uh, are difficult to come up with but we thank you Father that our loved ones and families you continually uh, uh, place them in the center of your hands thereby they are protected they are safe we thank you Father for answering our prayers thank you also for all the beautiful spiritual lessons that you have given us this week through our uh, individual devotions, through our group devotions, through the verses that we read, through the sermons that we have watched, uh, through the devotionals that we have uh, uh, encountered this week. We thank you, Father, for providing our spiritual needs. We thank you that through your word, uh, We are being strengthened and we are being comforted. We thank you for reminding us through your word that you are wise and that you are sovereign 
and that nothing happens outside of your control. Everything is under your watchful care. And we thank you, Father, for that assurance. This afternoon, Father, we pray for comfort and for strength and for provision for Ate Virgie Gloria and for her family. Her daughter-in-law passed away uh, after a long time of suffering from an illness. But we just thank you, Lord, that uh, you have finally manifested your power and your grace to the family by taking her home. We pray that you will just comfort the family, that you will just strengthen them. Pray for the husband, Melbourne, that you will be with him, Lord. And uh, may you turn this sorrow, this time of grief, into a blessing to him and the rest of his family. May it be that they would uh, experience your presence and your sustaining grace as they go through these difficult times. Father, we pray for Sister Jezebel Jimeno. On Wednesday, she will undergo a minor operation. We pray for provision. We pray also for preparation of health, of uh, her physical uh, body. I pray, Lord, that you will just strengthen her mind and her, and her heart, her emotions, so that as she goes through this procedure, uh, she would be able, Lord, to draw strength from you, not only from your presence and from your care, but also from your word and even from the encouragement coming from the brethren. Father, we pray for a daily growing confidence on your mighty power to save and keep us from this ongoing pandemic. Sometimes, Lord, the enemy of our souls would whisper to us, giving us doubts, putting questions in our minds with regards to the situation that we are in. But we ask you, Lord, to just help us to be strong in our faith. Help us to continually grow in our confidence in you and in your word that whatever you promise, you will surely do for us and for your glory. Father, we pray for our church members of the way. We pray for Sister Aquila Acosta and for Sister Generos Miso. We commit them to you. Thank you, Lord, that you have given them the privilege of uh, knowing you. We thank you for giving us the privilege to uh, guide them, Lord, and encourage them in their Christian life. We pray that you will just bless Sister Aquila and Sister Generos. Help them, Lord, in their daily work. Help them in their daily activities. That they would continually remember that their strength lies in you alone. Help them, Lord, to grow in their relationship with you. Help them to be strong in their faith. Help them, Lord, to, to share to other people, even to their loved ones, the story of the gospel. We pray that you will uh, continue to use their life as a channel of blessing to their uh, employers and also to us here uh, at CBBIMC. Father, we pray for our uh, countries of the week. We pray for Liechtenstein and for Lithuania. Uh, these are but small countries with, with a small number of population, but we pray, Lord, that you will continue to work in the midst of the, the people of these countries. That uh, even the unreached people in those countries would also get the opportunity to hear the gospel. We pray for the churches uh, that are there. We pray, Father, for a strong Christian testimony and a growing uh, zeal to share your word. We pray that you will bless the ministry being done in those two countries. We pray for our pastor of the week, Pastor Rosendo Colliado. We thank you, Lord, for his life and for the legacy that he has left. 
uh, at BBSNI. We thank you that up to this moment, uh, you are still using him and his wife in the ministry. We pray, Father, for good health for both of them. We pray for your anointing upon Pastor Colliado as he does more ministries for your glory and for the furtherance of your kingdom. Father, we pray for our missionary of the week, for Miss Marina Cagas. Uh, she is faithfully serving you at Pangsil at home uh, in the northern part of Thailand. We pray, Father, for your special blessings upon her, her life and her ministry. May, uh, may you continue to comfort her, Lord, even as she uh, lead, as she lead people, as she leads people to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we are praying for our Baptist hospitals in the Philippines. We pray for your protection and preservation of life for the medical personnel serving you there in the different Baptist hospitals in Aklan, in Leyte, in Palawan, even in Malay Balay, Kidno. We commit to you, Lord, that you will bless them in a special way and preserve their lives so that in the midst of this virus, they will just be safe. Father, we commit to you our time now as we study your word. We pray for your special blessing upon your people. Use your word, Lord, to empower each one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. For, uh, for these coming days, uh, we have begun our uh, a series of studies. Uh, the title of our uh, the topic that we are uh, considering this, uh, these days is uh, Guard and Guide Your God-Given Heart. We started this series last Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we have begun our devotional or our uh, semi-Bible study. Uh, we post it in our CBBIMC uh, Facebook page. And uh, today and tomorrow, uh, we, will, uh, we will also tackle some uh, topics related to this. But our theme verses are found in Proverbs 4.23 and that, that is the uh, text that we would be looking at this afternoon. Uh, the aim for this uh, study, for this series of study, is to help us realize that we must be wise stewards of the heart that God has given us. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, God tells His people, I give you a new heart. Jeremiah, in his, uh, in, his, in his book, reminds us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. We can never trust our hearts. We can never love God fully with deceitful hearts. And so God blesses us with a new heart. That is what God promised in Ezekiel 36. That is what God tells us uh, in 2 Corinthians. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and included in the newness is a new heart. But God wants us to be a wise steward of this God-given heart. And so we need to guard and guide our hearts. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us, In all our ways we must acknowledge Him and He will make our paths straight. 
But here in the text that we will be looking at this afternoon, we will find out that we have an active part in protecting, in guarding, and in guiding our hearts. So the title of the sermon this afternoon is Guard Your Heart. This comes from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 to 27. All of us enjoy reading through the book of Proverbs. And I believe some of you would even say, Pastor, the book of Proverbs is my favorite book in all of the books of the Bible. Probably because the verses there uh, have touched you in a special way. Have encouraged you in a special way. Probably the words found in the book of Proverbs have encouraged you, have illuminated you, have brought you to a higher level of understanding God, His will, His word, His way. But probably to some of us, we find it difficult just going through the book of Proverbs. There are some people who would say that the Proverbs is a special book because it is a book of one-liners. Have you considered thinking it, thinking about it that way? That Proverbs is a book of one-liners? Because for sure, there are, there are very common verses there na maiklik lang po. Uh, we call it one-liners. There are some people who say that uh, a, the book of Proverbs is a grab bag of wise sayings. Huh? Someone asked for, for, a, for an advice from you and uh, you just go to the book of Proverbs or probably you just recall a verse in the book of Proverbs because for some people, the book of Proverbs is a grab bag, a ready bag, an emergency bag of wise sayings. To some people, the book of Proverbs is a book of the wise for the wise. And, and, and probably to some people, uh, they have a special feeling just going through the book of Proverbs. Because this is a book of the wise written by Solomon, the wisest person. For the wise. So if you would read this book, if you would contemplate on this book, if you would meditate on this book, then you are wise. But someone, someone gives this description about the book of Proverbs. And I like this description. He said, the book of Proverbs is the loss of heaven for life on earth. It is the loss of of heaven for life on earth. Now, you may have read the book casually. Siguro po, when you read this book, uh, hindi ka ano ganon yung focus mo sa pagbasa nito. You have just read through this book casually. But we need to be convinced, brethren in the Lord and friends, we need to be convinced that these words written in the book of Proverbs are like arrows. God designed the words of this book to be like arrows. And so what is the significance? Because they are like arrows, they always hit the bull's eye, the bull's eye of our hearts, the bull's eye of our uh, uh, minds. Every time we read through this, uh, the words of this book are like, are like arrows that always hit the bull's eye of our hearts and our minds. Talagang dead center talaga, tatamaan talaga yung puso mo, tatamaan yung isip mo, and it would make you think. 
Not only that it hits the bull's eye, always, it also pierces you every time you read these words. Ibig sabihin mo, now whenever you read the book of Proverbs and of course the rest of the, the word of God, huh? it pierces you. It pierces me. It gets our attention and it helps us realize of our need to change. Kasi alam po ninyo, ang salita ng Diyos, it has the transforming power to change our minds, our hearts, our lives. In verses 23 to 27, mga kapatid, we see here that uh, these verses speak of things that pertain to some parts of our lives, of our bodies. We see here things that pertain to our hearts. Uh, that is what we see in verse 23. We see things here that pertain to the mouth. It says, we see that in verse 24. We see things here that pertain to the eyes. We see that in verse 25. And we see here things that pertain to the feet. We see that in verses 26 and 27. In other words, itong mga verses na binasa po natin, these verses that we have just read, this has something to do with what we feel and think, with what we say, with what we see, and with the places that we would want to go. And because these are the laws of heaven for life here on earth, we must submit ourselves to the laws of heaven through these verses that we have just learned. Familiar po tayo sa mga batas in the Philippines, we have a set of laws in the Philippines. So, nung nandun tayo sa Pilipinas, mga kapatid na natin na nandyan sa Pilipinas ngayon, familiar po kayo sa mga batas dyan sa Pilipinas. Opo. But when you go to other places, isa po sa mga priority na natin, aalamin natin kung ano ang mga batas sa bagong lugar na pinuntahan natin. So, for example, yung mga tao na noon nandoon sa Pilipinas, alam nila, familiar sila sa batas na lupa doon sa Pilipinas. Ngayon na nandito sila sa Hong Kong, inalam nila yung batas ng Hong Kong para po uh, hindi po magka-problema. And that is the point also of the Word of God. Because Proverbs is the laws of heaven for life here on earth. It is very important for us, brethren in the Lord and friends, to know these laws of heaven so that as we live here on earth, Alam natin kung ano yung responsibility natin sa harap ng Diyos at sa mata ng mga tao. And so, we will be looking at some of these things ngayong hapon na ito. Brethren in the Lord, if we are going to live here and please God, we have to remember that we have to be governed by the laws of heaven. If we are going to live here on earth and please God, we have to remember that we have to be governed by the laws of heaven as written in the word of God. I want to share with you several points this afternoon as we reflect on God's command for us to keep or guard your heart. As we look at these verses, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, just five verses. As we look at these five verses this afternoon, we will see a command, a very clear command. We will also see a, the reason why we must follow the command. We, must all, we will also see three outward actions 
connected to this command. And finally, we will also see the promise for all of us who will obey this command. So that would be the flow of our study for this afternoon. Let us begin by looking at the command. The command is found in verse 23. And the command is this. Keep or guard your heart with all diligence. That is the command. Keep or guard your heart with all diligence. Brethren in the Lord, there are things that we treasure the most. Bawat isa sa atin, we have some things that we would say, these are the most treasured possessions that we have. I do not know about you, pero probably to some, siguro po, uh, ginto, alahas, pinaka, pinaka mahalaga sa buhay nila. Things that they treasure most, probably jewelry. To some, probably a collection of uh, very most precious things. To some, probably a, a an, en an envelope full of uh, title deeds. Oh, marami, marami kayong lupa, yung mga titulo ng lupa, nandyan sa loob ng isa folder or, or envelope. And to you, that could be your most treasured possession. Hmm? Pero alam yung mga kapatid and friends, this most valuable treasured possessions that we have, we don't put it in a shoebox. May pera ka, malaking, malaking halaga ng pera, you have a big sum of money, you don't place it inside a shoebox and put it under your bed. No. If you have some jewelry, probably uh, something that has been handed down to you or something that has been handed uh, down the generations, nandyan sa'yo ngayon, you don't put it inside a shoebox and just place it under the bed. Hmm? Why? Kasi pwede parang mawala. Pwedeng, pwedeng maiwan kung saan. Uh, you can easily misplace it. You can easily lose it. You don't put it inside a jar at ilagay mo sa ibabaw ng ref. You don't do it. That is why there are people who would, you know, who would buy uh, expensive safe safety boxes. There are people who would go to the bank and would, you know, we would rent a safety deposit box in the bank because they want to put the most pressure, treasured possessions that they have inside those uh, safety boxes, safety deposit boxes. <clears throat> Mga kapatid, we have the most valuable possession in our lives today. And that is not money. That is not jewelry. That is not a title deed. It is your heart and it is my heart. Your heart, my heart is the most valuable possession that we have. And God's Word tells us that we must keep our heart with all Diligence. Kung pwede mo lang ilagay sa safety deposit box yung puso mo, you put it in a safety box and you wrap it in chains and you put multiple locks on it because your heart and my heart is the most valuable possession that we have. Why? This is the reason. Why? 
Because according to verse 23, it is the source of all ethical and moral actions and dealings. What, does, what, what do we mean by this? We are not talking about, we are not talking about the key organ of the circulatory system. We are not talking about the heart na nandito po sa dibdib natin na nagbobomba ng dugo sa buong katawan. We are not talking about that. We are talking about the control center of our lives from which our decisions, our feelings, our thought processes come from. Ito po yung control center ng buhay natin. At lahat na meron tayo sa buhay, ating iniisip, ating uh, words, ating damdami, lahat ng ito galing dito sa spiritual organ ang tawag natin ay heart. This is the source of our thoughts, our actions, our words, our attitudes, even our intentions. Have you realized that? Have you realized that? Na even our intentions, galing dito. Even our attitudes, the attitudes that we show every day, galing dito. This is the reason why we must take good care of our hearts. We must keep our hearts with all diligence. We must guard our hearts because it is the source of all ethical and moral actions and dealings. What determines, what determines the quality of our words and thoughts, what determines the sincerity of our intentions and motives, galing po dito. What guarantees the quality of all of this, galing po dito, on how we take care, on how we keep, on how we guard our hearts. So ang isang tao, ang isang ang isang Kristiyano na binabantayan niya maiki, inaalagaan niya maiki ang kanyang puso, for sure, ang kanyang intentions, his attitudes, his thoughts, his words would be good, would be better, would be best because all of this would come out of a well-guarded heart. At mga kapatid, dito minsan, ah, this is where we we become forgetful. And I'm not just talking about the unbelievers. I am also talking about us Christians, about us believers. This is where we become forgetful. Why? Because we thought that all that all that is precious is money and jewelry and title deeds and diplomas. We forget that what is most important and valuable, our heart. This is the control center. This is the source. And looking at verse 23, the writer of this, uh, of this passage compares the heart to a fountain, to a spring, source of water. Kailangan bantayan yung puso. Bakit? Dito galing lahat. And Jesus tells us, Jesus tells us, in the Gospels, From a heart that is well taken care of comes good things. From, a, from, from the heart that is uncared for would come bad things. And so, iisipin, iisipin mo siguro kapatid, iisipin mo kapatid, kaibigan mo. 
saan ang gagaling? If I face a particular circumstance in life, saan ang gagaling ang galit? Saan ang gagaling ang bitterness na biglang nararamdaman mo? Well, now you know. It comes from the heart. When you become frustrated, when you become disappointed, na, nagmura ka, saan galing yun? From the heart. When you become disappointed, you become bitter towards people, towards towards circumstances, towards situations. You become bitter, saan galing yun? From the heart. Intentions that are not God glorifying, saan galing yun? From the heart. That is why the Word of God tells us to keep or guard our hearts. In the Bible, mga kapatid, in Matthew 24, verse 48, Jesus gives a parable about a servant. A servant who, because he was disappointed with his master, he began beating his fellow servants. Let's look at that verse. Matthew 24, 48. Ito yung sabi ni Jesus sa, sa parable. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. We see here this servant. Jesus labels him as an evil servant. Bakit po? Because he was disappointed by the delay of the return of his master. Probably his master told his servants, I will return. Naghintay. Hindi na makapaghintay. Matagal. He got disappointed. And because he got disappointed, ito yung sabi, uh, continuation, 449. Sabi, He shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and this is the action now, and shall begin to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. The master wants his servants to be vigilant and to be faithful. And yet, he delayed in his return. Ano ang ginawa nitong evil servant? He said to his heart, Ah, he will not be coming anymore. And so he started beating his fellow servants and he started to live a life of debauchery, eating and drinking with drunkards. Saan nagmula yun? From a heart that is unguarded. And so this reminds us, mga kapatid, this reminds us, kasi many times, we get disappointed also. And so we need to guard our hearts, kasi sa mga panahon we are disappointed, huh? we think the same thoughts that the evil servant thought about. Another verse, in John chapter 13, we see here the Judas Iscariot. Uh, so we tell, and supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to the train. Saan ang galing? Kay Satan mismo. Saan niya inilagay? Sa puso ni Judas Iscariot. And what does this teach us? We need to keep and guard our hearts because there are some thoughts na hindi talaga galing sa atin, galing sa kaaway natin. We need to guard and keep our hearts. Solomon, in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4, ito po yung sabi, For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Nakakalungkot. At the time of his old age, his wives turned away his heart from worshiping and following after God. The wife, his wives turned his heart away from God. At ano ang sabi? 
His heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. So you see, this is the reason, this is the command. Let us keep our hearts, let us guard our hearts. For what reason? Because this is the control center of our whole being. This is the source, like the spring, like the fountain. This is the source of our thoughts and words, of our motives and attitudes, and our intentions, and our actions. Let us guard our hearts. And so, ano ang dapat natin gawin? Ah, God's Word gives us uh, ways, gives us ways. Paano natin gagawin ito? Ah, sabi sa Psalm 119.11 Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What does it mean? It simply means that as we read God's word daily, regularly, we memorize God's word. We memorize God's word. We write God's word in our hearts. We keep it in our hearts. We memorize it. So that when disappointments come, when the whispers of Satan come, ah, may ipang lalaban tayo. Colossians 3.16 Sabi po, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. This gives us the idea that keeping God's word in our hearts is very, very necessary. If you want to keep your heart, if you want to guard your heart, if you want to actively do it, you must Place God's Word in your heart. Alam nyo, sa Matthew chapter 4, in the story about the temptation of Christ, every time that Satan would tempt him, okay, huh, Jesus would counter the satanic attack with the Word of God. We read from, Mal from Matthew chapter 4, this phrase, It is written, it is written, it is written. Meaning, Jesus, Jesus could counter the attack coming from Satan through the word of God. We see here first the command. We also see here the reason for the command. Now we look at the three outward actions. How do we apply this? The command, keep your heart or guard your heart. How do we apply this? Where do we specifically apply this? Let us look at the three outward actions. Number one, this has something to do with our mouths. And our lips, in verse 24, it says, Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. This is the first outward action. Do away with thoughtless words. All of us are guilty of this. We allow thoughtless words to come out of our mouths, to come out of our mouths. We allow mga salita na hindi natin napag-isipan, we allow them to come out of our mouths. Some of the best people in the world, huh? some of the best people in the world, have committed mistakes in what they said. I'll give you several examples. First, Moses. Moses, according to the Bible, was the meekest person in the earth. 
But there was a time when he was careless with his words. Imagine out of frustration, he, tell, he, he told God, God, just erase my name in your book. I cannot go on anymore. Just kill me, God. Can you imagine that? Moses was an example of a person. He was among the best persons in the world. But he was also an example of a person who has committed mistakes in what he said. Miriam, his older sister. When Moses was still a baby, Miriam took care of him. But when Moses was already old, Miriam used her mouth to speak thoughtless words. She eventually spoke against him and God punished her and the entire camp of Israel has to wait for several days. For Miriam to recover from her leprosy. At one time, at one time, she led the people of Israel to sing praises to God. She was a poet. But out from the same mouth, huh? sabi pa ni James, it is impossible. It is unimaginable for a fountain, for a spring to produce both sweet water and bitter water. Pero talaga dito sa kay Miriam, ha? one moment she led the people of Israel to sing praises to God, to worship God, the next moment ha? she spoke words against his young, younger brother Moses. On November 28, 1942, in Boston, Massachusetts, there have been the deadliest known nightclub fire in the world. Ang pangalan po ng nightclub, Coconut Grove. I saw this picture. The motive of this nightclub was tropical. And so you will notice na may mga puno na nyo sa loob, palm trees. Throughout the hall of that nightclub, palm trees. And also curtains from floor to ceiling. Even yung ceiling mismo binalot ng, ng mga kurtina. On November 28, 1942, the manager of the nightclub noticed that a light was off, walang ilaw. And so, inutusan niya ang isang busboy to, you know, to fix the bulb. The busboy took a matchstick, lit that matchstick para makita niya yung socket ng bulb. He shook the matchstick, he threw it, akala niya wal, patay na yung sinidi, akala niya wala na yung apoy. Dumikit sa kurtina. And suddenly, the entire building was on fire. It was the deadliest known nightclub fire in the world. Nearly 500 died on the night of November 28. 1942. Almost 500. 490 something. All. All of them. All of those 490 something people died. They were consumed by fire. They were suffocated by the smoke. Walang nakalabas. 
almost 500 walang nakalabas. Alam niyo, may warning ang salita ng Diyos about this. Hindi, hindi about sa night club, kundi about sa apoy. Because in James chapter 3, the tongue is compared to to a fire. Let's look at that. Sabi sa James 3, 5, Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Verse 6, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire all hell. Have you noticed, ilang beses, lumabas yung word na fire? The tongue is being compared to fire. Kung ano ka deadly yung nangyari sa coconut grove, uh, mas deadly yung, yung dila natin. And so we must do away with thoughtless words. When you are emotionally upset, huh? hinga ng malalim. Don't allow your mouth to take control of you. Guard your heart. Because if your heart is evil, from your evil heart would come out evil words. Hurting words. Words that will consume people. Words that will burn people. I know of people. I have friends. Na alam mo talaga, alam mo talaga na their hearts are bitter. Alam mo talaga na their hearts are full of anger. Ka kasi kahit saan sila, whenever they speak up, alam mo, may galit, may bitterness ang mga words nila. It is a call for us, loving brethren, to guard and to keep our hearts. And so, what should we do? What should we do? God's Word tells us what to do. We must constantly talk about the Lord. Ito pala yung, 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 yung paraan in order for us to prevent our mouths from speaking thoughtless words. We must always talk about the Lord. Let us look at two verses from Malachi chapter 3. Malachi 3.16 Then they that fear the Lord speak often one to another. At alam ninyo kung anong pinag-uusapan nila nitong mga tao who fear the Lord. They speak about the Lord. And the Lord heard it and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the Lord and that thought upon his name. That phrase there, thought upon his name. Ibig sabihin, they have reflected and meditated about God and they speak to one another about God. Ang topic nila, Diyos. And so what is God's favor for them? Malachi 3.17, the next verse, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, I will I will. Spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. That is God's favor for those people who constantly speak to one another about him. Mga kapatid, this is a reminder for us that whenever we come together, we must not talk about anything else, we must constantly talk about God. Ano ba pinag-uusapan natin every time na magkita-kita tayo? Ha? Halimbawa, next week on the 23rd, 
the government would lift up the lockdown. And that would give us the opportunity to be together again. Ano ang pag-uusapan natin? Sa ibang tao, hmm, alam na kung anong pag-uusapan. Sa ibang tao, mga chismi, sa mga anong mga nangyayari, yun ang pag-uusapan. But God's Word tells us, this is part of our responsibility to guard our hearts as we manifest that in our outward actions, we must always talk about the Lord. Ito lang po yung ang pwede natin gawin. It's either we talk with each other about God or we talk to God about each other. Yun lang yun ang pwede natin gawin. Mag-usap tayo patungkol sa Diyos or kausapin natin ang Diyos tungkol sa bawat isa sa atin. Yun lang ang dapat natin gawin. Hindi pwede. Hindi pwede. That we will talk against the Lord. Hindi rin pwede that we will talk against each other. Mga kapatid, sa atin ng mga mananampalataya, sa atin ng mga kristyano, sa atin ng mga believers, sana wala ito sa atin. Sana wala ito sa atin. That we would talk against each other. Sana wala ito sa atin. Sana wala ito sa atin that we would talk against God. Ang inutos ng salita ng Diyos sa atin is that we either talk with each other about God or we talk to God about each other, bringing each other to God in prayer. Yun ang utos ng salita ng Diyos sa atin. Do away with thoughtless words. Second, outward action. Not only that we must do away with thoughtless words, verse 24, but second, letter B, we must keep our moral gaze steadily fixed. Verse 25. Look at verse 25 if you have your Bible with you. Verse 25. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. The Bible tells us that the light of the body is the eye. Uh, you find that in Matthew, Matthew 6.22. The light of the body is the eye. Kapag okay ang eyes, then the body will enjoy the brightest light. Pag may diferensya ang mata, the body will be in darkness. We wonder what it must be like to be blind. Subukan mo nga kapatid, the next time na pupunta ka sa palengke, ipikit mo yung mata mo, lagyan mo ng piring at maglakad ka. Subukan mo nga kung ano ang buhay ng isang bulag. Mahirap. But we praise the Lord for eyesight. And we realize that the eyesight that God has given us is both a blessing and a responsibility. Anong ibig sabihin? If you would just think about how God designed the eye, sasabihin mo talaga, may Diyos talaga. Ewan ko ba bakit may mga tao na nag-iisip pa rin na walang Diyos. But if you would just think about how the eye is designed, you will surely say that there is a creator who has created the eye. Huh? The fastest camera lens would pay in comparison to the speed of the eye. Tatalunin pa rin ng mata yung speed na pinakamabilis na camera lens. Tatalunin pa rin ng mata. Ano ang pinakamataas na megapixel na lens? Tatalunin pa rin ng mata. 
That is the blessing. And to us who can see, we are thankful for the blessing of Isaac. But you know what, brothers, sisters, friends? You know what? With this blessing is a great responsibility. Why? Because what our eyes see somehow gets recorded dito po sa memory natin. And our brain can replay it hundreds, thousands of times kung ano ang nakita natin. In the darkness of your bedroom, your mind can replay what you saw. I'll give you some example. If. See, if. One day he saw something that was forbidden and he kept on looking at it until she sinned. Yung prutas. She kept on looking at it. How shiny it was. And finally, she sinned. She gave in to the temptation. She took the fruit. She ate. She sinned. She fell into sin. David, 2 Samuel 11. She was there, sa rooftop. He was there, sa rooftop. He was there. He saw something. And he didn't stop. Until Bathsheba was brought into his presence. Lot, the nephew of Abraham, he saw something. When Abraham brought him doon po sa hilltop, and Abraham showed him the valley, the land, Lot saw something towards Jordan. He saw a place so green, but beyond the greenness of the place, he saw something more. He saw the attraction of the cities. And later on, he found himself deciding to stay in Sodom. Achan, he saw some things. He saw some beautiful things. He looked and continued to look. And then he began to covet these things. And he was not satisfied with coveting. He took these things. And he hid them under his tent. All because They were not careful, all of them, they were not careful to keep their moral gaze steadily fixed. What does God what does God's word tell us what to do? Job 31 1. Job said his words, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? I made a covenant, I made an agreement with my eye that I would not look at, I would not look lustily at a woman. I would not look lustily at a maiden. I would keep my eyes in check because Whatever our eyes see, they get registered in our memory bank. What must we do? We must train our eyes to see the glory of God. Second Corinthians 3.18, the word of God says, But we all with open face, beholding us in a glass, 
the glory of the Lord. What does it mean? Does it mean that we must look at the sun and pretend that it is the glory of God? No. It simply means that wherever we wherever we glance, wherever we turn our eyes to, we always look for manifestations of the workings of God. And we glorify Him for what He does. We train our eyes to see, to behold the glory of God. If we do that, we are changed into His image. Sabi dyan, the same image are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Another verse, Hebrews 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us try train our eyes to look, to look unto Jesus. Itatanong mo siguro, Pastor, anong gagawin ko? Ipag-pray ko na pakita siya sa akin? No. We can easily see Him in the words of the Bible. We can easily see Him in the lives of His people. We manifest Christ's likeness. And in the lives of Christ-like people, we see Jesus. But we look upon Him with faith. We train our eyes to constantly look unto Jesus. The third, the third outward action, not only that we must do away with thoughtless words, not only that we must keep our moral gaze steadily fixed, but thirdly, we must remove all obstacles that may obstruct a moral life. We find that in verses 26, first part of 26, and the rest of 27. Under the path of thy feet, turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Here in these verses, we are instructed to remove all obstacles that may obstruct a moral life. Mga kapatid, we see several examples in the Bible of characters who were not careful as they walked their lives here on earth. Si Jonah. One example was Jonah. Jonah or God showed Jonah the way that he must go. But Jonah obstructed the way with his pride and disobedience. And so he went the opposite direction. Samson Samson learned about the right direction. But because he obstructed, he didn't remove the obstruction. Rather, he, he, he placed the obstruction in the path. The obstruction of pride and disobedience. He found himself in a wrong place. He lost his sight. He lost his strength. He lost his testimony. And it could happen also to us if we will not be careful. It could happen to every Christian. A Christian could lose his testimony. A Christian could lose his strength. A Christian could lose his spiritual eyesight. Or sometimes, literal eyesight. If the Christian would not be careful. Abraham. He came to the right place. Genesis chapter 12. He came to the right place. But there was a famine. And so he went to Egypt. 
And when he returned from Egypt, he brought along trouble in the person of Hagar. Nag-away po si Hagar at si Sarah at naging problema. What must we do? We must remove the obstacles that would obstruct us from following the path of a moral life. This is the assurance that God has given us. Isaiah 30, 21, God gives this assurance to His people. Sabi niya, And thine ear shall hear a word behind this saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. God promised this to His people. May maririnig kayo. This is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. That is God's provision. His guidance. Someone one tells us, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Ephesians 5.15 tells us, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. That is what we must do, brethren and the Lord. Friends, that is what we must do if you want to guard, if you want to keep our hearts with all diligence. And so because our heart is the control center, it is the source of all thoughts and words and actions and attitudes and intentions, we must guard our hearts. God has given us a heart. We must guard our hearts. What is the promise? Finally, what is the promise? You find the promise in the last part of verse 26. The promise is this. All your ways will be sure and established. That is the promise. Keep your faith. And the promise is this. When you keep your faith, all your ways will be sure and established. Kayo po na nag-hiking. Minsan nawawala po kayo. May kwento nung kailan yun. We have a brother and a, uh, they went uh, on a hike at nawala po sila. I mean, uh, na, you know, they lost their way. Very important yung, uh, very important yung compass. Brother William, uh, share with me an application na pwede mo i-download uh, would give you, would, would guide you sa, sa train if you want to uh, go on a hike. Pinag-aralan ko, tinignan ko, may GPS, uh, the satellite could locate you wherever you are and would guide you if you lose your way. This is the promise coming from God's Word. If we guard our heart, then we decide to remove all obstacles. We become careful with how we walk. This is the promise. All your ways will be sure and established. You will not lose your way. You will not lose your way. You will not lose your way in life. Your ways will be sure and established. I want to leave with you two points to ponder this week as we continue to let God work in our minds and hearts through the, through the sermon that we have meditated on this afternoon. The first point, your heart is the control center of your life. Guard it always and guard it well. Do not have unguarded moments with your heart. It is non-negotiable. Do not allow your heart to take control of you. Do not allow your heart to direct you. You direct your heart. You control your heart. You ask God to help you control, keep, guard your heart. Because it is the control center of your heart. Guard it always. 
current well. Second, a well-established life is the guarantee of a well-guarded heart. If you want your life to be well-established, no amount of storms could uproot you if you have a well-established life, if you want to have that kind of life, it all starts with a well-guarded heart. A well-guarded heart. But ayan mo mabuti ang puso. Because when you do, you will have a well-established life. Kahit anong bagyo dumating sa buhay mo, no amount of storms, no amount of tidal waves can uproot you from being established in your life and the guarantee that is the guarantee if you will have a well guarded heart may God bless his words in our, into our minds and hearts and lives this week let us pray Father God in heaven we thank you for your word we thank you for your reminding for, for your reminder for each one of us and we ask you loving Father to just Continue to bless these words into our hearts and minds this week, this coming week, so that we will always be aware and conscious to guard and keep the heart that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We would want to greet uh, uh, Sister Hoyi uh, Lau. This coming uh, April 20 uh, will be her birthday. Sister Hoyi, happy, happy birthday. And also, same birthday greetings goes to Mantita Garcia. Mantita will be celebrating her birthday on April 24. Mantita, happy, happy birthday. Our prayer for Sister Hoyi and for Mantita is for God's Enduring blessings, rich blessings, would continue to follow you both as you celebrate your birthday, your birthdays, and even throughout the year. Uh, I have one more announcement. Uh, this uh, this is an application that will bring you to a series of, of movies, not movies, but a series of episodes about the life of Jesus Christ. Probably some of you are already familiar with this. But to some of you na hindi pa po familiar, we will send you and you check your, our, you check our uh, group chat, uh, we, we are sending you the link. Uh, kung ang cell mo phone mo po ay Apple, ang link para sa Apple. Kung ang uh, cell phone mo po ay Android, yung link para sa Android. Uh, you go to that link that will redirect you doon po sa app. And you just download the app and watch these episodes about the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can share this with your family in the Philippines. You send also the link. You can share this with your uh, alaga. Uh, uh, show them the, uh, the film about uh, the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we pray that that would give you an opportunity, you know, to share the gospel through these uh, movies uh, dito po sa uh, app entitled The Chosen. Okay? So, uh, uh, it has been announced already na na-extend pa po yung ating lockdown. Uh, sabi hanggang sa 23, we do not know. Probably sa 23, baka i-lift na po nila. And so, we will just wait. And uh, we will also wait for the advice of the government. And we will see what we will uh, do next ano, after all of this is uh, over after everything has been lifted. So uh, we are looking forward for the time that we will be together again. That we uh, we just uh, wait and uh, we just continue to seek God's face 
in this time of difficulty. Okay? We will sing our last hymn, the song, Give Me Thy Heart. I'll give the time to Jay-Z for our final hymn. Let's all please sing, Give Me Thy Heart. Yeah.